I'm Richard Clark. I record these talks every day as a way to deepen my inquiry. Listen each day and deepen your own practice. Welcome. I'm reviewing and commenting on the book Talks with Sri Ramana Maharshi. Today is from Talk 363, Part 8. Questioner. Cannot grace hasten such competence in a seeker? Maharshi. Leave it to him. Surrender unreservedly. One of two things must be done. Either surrender because you admit your inability and also require a high power to help you, or investigate into the cause of misery, go into the source and merge into the self. Either way, you will be free from misery. God never forsakes one who has surrendered Mamikan Saranan Vajra. Question. What is the drift of the mind after surrender? Maharshi. Is the surrendered mind raising the question? Laughter. In this dialogue, the questioner is seeking clarity on the role of grace in hastening spiritual competence. In this context, competence refers to spiritual competence or maturity. This includes the seeker's ability to progress on the spiritual path, deepen their understanding of the self, gain self-knowledge, and ultimately attain liberation or self-realization. Ramana Maharshi's response offers insights into the essence of surrender and self-inquiry. The questioner asks if grace can accelerate the speaker's competence. The Maharshi responds not on grace, but about surrender. He advises the questioner to leave it to the divine, emphasizing the importance of unreserved surrender and just letting it all unfold as it will. This surrender involves a complete admission of your lack of ability to control or influence the course of spiritual progress. Spiritual progress, Ramana says, is not something that you do you open the door, but it is grace that pulls you through. When you recognize the need for a higher power's assistance, you ready the ground for it. This assistance is what is called grace. Surrender allows grace to unfold. The Maharshi then outlines two paths for attaining liberation from misery, surrender and self-inquiry. The first path is unconditional surrender. By surrendering completely to God or a higher power, the seeker acknowledges their limitations and trusts in divine guidance and intervention. The seeker has given up the sense of mine in favor of thine, not by my power, but yours. This path relies on faith and devotion with the understanding that God will never abandon those who truly surrender. Maharshi cites the Bhagavad Gita Mamakan Saranam Vajra, meaning take refuge in me alone. To reinforce the idea that divine support is unwavering to those who surrender. 
The second path is self-inquiry. This is what Ramana practiced in Madurai 16 and what he teaches as the shortest path to realization. In inquiry, you actively investigate your sense of identity. What you think is you. You find various ideas of yourself and the roles that you play. Are these ideas who you are? As you trace it back, you find this body and mind saying, it is me that you are. These ideas of a separate existence are the root cause of your suffering. And when you know this, you will want to merge with the self, the pure consciousness. This merging is not by any activity. It is a matter of knowledge, self-knowledge. This involves a deep and persistent examination of your ideas, thoughts, and emotions to trace them back to their source, ultimately realizing your identity as the non-dual reality. Inquiry investigates the idea of I and reveals that this sense of ego I which fluctuates each day as you sleep and wake, is just something you have assumed to be reality. But reality does not come and go. So the ego I is not the reality. Ego is not your identity. Ego is not real. It was never real. Both paths, Maharshi says, lead to freedom from misery, but they require different approaches, one of faith and devotion, the other of inquiry and discrimination. When the questioner asks about the state of the mind after surrender, Maharshi humorously asks if this question itself is coming from a surrendered mind, which prompts laughter. This response highlights an essential point. A truly surrendered mind does not raise questions or doubts. The very act of questioning indicates that the mind has not yet fully surrendered, as surrender involves letting go of all mental agitation and relying entirely on the higher power. Ramana Maharshi's teachings here emphasize the two approaches of surrender and self-inquiry, both leading to liberation. Surrender entails complete faith in the divine, while self-inquiry requires persistent and sincere investigation into your true nature. Surrender deals with your sense of mind, while inquiry deals with I. Ultimately, both paths converge in the realization of the self, where all doubts and miseries dissolve. So, know yourself and be always free and at peace. The book, Who Am I with Comments, is my take on these early teachings of Ramana Maharshi. It's available on Amazon free to Kindle subscribers. A link is in the video notes. These videos bring Ramana's teachings into your direct experience. Click subscribe to see more. Click thumbs up to like and send questions and start a dialogue with the comments.